some painting in this video here. I just got to assemble everything back on. I had just painted the jams in my previous video. I got to put the hood, the doors, and the deck lid back on. And once I do that, I wet sand everything and get ready to put it in the booth. But here go the doors. I painted this a satin, this a gloss. So let me take care of that, and I'll cut you back on. Got everything assembled back on. Now it's time to just go ahead and start wet sanding, so I can get it on in the booth. Let me show you what I'm working with. I'm gonna be wet sanding it with 320. It's by Evercoat. And um, also, I have two different blocks. I have a rigid block and a flex. And some soap and water. I'm just gonna drop my 320 in there. Let it soak for a minute or two. Then I get started. I had rinsed it off because it's been sitting outside while I was putting everything back on. And you don't want to start sanding and, and something be done. Fell on it and get up under the sandpaper, then you'll scratch it up. So, we got it rinsed off, so now we're going to grab our block with the sandpaper. And we're just going to go back, back and forth in X pattern. We're moving this guide coat. And once all the guide coat gone, we're good to go. Should be flat. Pretty much flat anyway because when I blocked it before I had did the uh, primer, I got it pretty much flat. But we still gonna make sure it's flat with this block. All right, let me finish this up and then I cut you back on. This is what it's gonna look like once you finish sanding it. Then you can look at it at an angle because that water going to show you all your dings and imperfections. It's like a clear coat. Alright, let me show you why it's always good to put this gag coat on. Let me wipe this down so I can show you. You see right here? It's like a chip I didn't catch and I didn't feel it when I had, was doing the body work. But that guide coat, it showed me my low area. Now I'm just gonna take some glazing putty, some of this here, and I wipe some in this little spot here, this little imperfection, and fill it. Let me show you this before I move on. Right here where I had blocked it down to the actual filler. I had made a repair right here. When I was blocking it, I reached the filler. And when you do that, you wanna go ahead and prime it again because 
when you shoot your base, this spot here will look totally different from this spot because that filler, it soak up your base a lot faster than this primer. So you want to fill them pinholes so you won't have that problem. And I've been finding the other little pinholes I've been hitting as I've been going along. Got everything wet sanded. All the things left, I gotta go back and wet sand my little areas I put glaze and put it in. I don't have many, just a few. And I'm also, I'm gonna go ahead and install these window trim clips that go right here. Because I hate to paint the car, then try to install them chip up something or scratch it up. If I'm going to scratch it up, I'd rather do it now. So let me take care of that and then we'll be ready to wash it up and pull it in the booth. Cleaned out for Mustang Sally. Gonna bring on up in here, get rid of the sprayer. I got it in the booth. I'm just trying to wipe it down now. Get all this water off of from washing them. Once I get everything dry, I probably don't do nothing until tomorrow. I'm just let it sit out here and dry off. Then I come back out here in the morning and mask everything up that I need to mask. Alright, this is the following morning. I got some of my stuff I'm going to be using to mask. I'm going to be using this soft edge foam tape. It's somewhere right here. Just so you won't get a hard line, you get a soft edge. And I'm also going to be using regular masking paper. I'm going to use both of them. Because a lot of times when you use this, sometimes the overspray will get through this. And then you'll have overspray on your jams and stuff. So I'm going to use this. Then I'm going to put this off edge at the edge of so I won't get a hard line. But I'll show you more once I put it down. I'm going to be using it on my jams. On the deck lid. Also on the hood. Let me get you caught up on the mask. I made sure I had stuffed some masking paper up in there to keep that overspray from getting up in there when I shoot this. And I started doing the jams here. I'm going to go back and put some soft edge right here along this. And I don't have to paint this rocker painter because I did that when I painted the jams so I got it masked off. I got masking paper up in here so no overspray won't make itself around there and get on the jams that I already had painted. So I rolled the window down just to mask this chrome trim here. I'm going to roll it back up. And then I shut the door. Once I put that soft edge tape there, I shut the door and mask from the drip rail down to here. Okay, I put two pieces of soft edge tape here just to be on the safe side to make that seal and then you just shut your door and it should just seal it up see it's sealed up now you should have a softer edge a soft land it shouldn't be no hard land now I'm just going to mask from the drip rail down to here and I'd be good. Got this side here done. Alright, let me finish up the rest so I'll cut you back on.
I'm pretty much done. Well, I'm done with the masking. Let me walk around the car. Show you what I got going on. I just got one problem that I got to fix before I start actually painting it. This area here. It's going to be the third time I'm dealing with this here. I had seen it. It was like a little ding. And I had primed over it. And it didn't actually fill the ding up. What? It, it wasn't no ding. It seemed like it was probably a chip or something. Then I primed over the chip. And you still could see it. But I tried to wipe some glaze and put on it. Then I tried to shortcut and spray some aerosol can prime on it. And it started interacting with the red single stage base coat that was on here. It started interacting. And it was wrinkling up. So I sanded it down again and tried to do it again. And it happened to me again. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to wet sand this again. And right before I paint it, I'm going to spray a sealer over this area here. Hopefully that take care of the problem. And while I'm spraying that, I might as well go on the spray. Because it's going to be enough in the cup. I might as well go ahead and spray this. Put some sealer on that. And probably this here. But that's what's been giving me problems, and I'll probably go ahead and spray the sill on this hood too. So let me go ahead and wet sand this with some 320. Then I wipe everything down, then I spray my sill in them areas there before I shoot the base. Which I'm thinking I can get away with not spraying that sill, but I don't want to take that chance. I'm just going to go ahead and spray it over that area there. And be done with it. We're sanding that with 320. That should be good to go now. Now I'll be wiping everything down with some wax and grease remover. I'll be using this here. And it's good to use two rags. Wipe it on with one rag and then wipe it off with the other. You want to make sure you wipe it off because you don't want to leave no wax and grease remove on it. And start spraying your base coat. You want to make sure it doesn't evaporate it. So let me take care of that. Then I'll cut you back on. I also started wetting the floor down. Finish wiping everything down. Once you wipe everything down, what I like to do, I like to take everything off with a dry tag. Then once I take everything off, I'll go back and blow it off right before I start spraying. So that's what I'm about to do. Then I take care of all my areas that I'm going to spray with Silla. Alright, it's been about an hour or so. I could actually, I could have just went and scraped the base coat. But I had started seeing the ring where I did the little uh, glaze and put it. I seen that ring, the outline of it. You can't really see it right here. But if I step back into the light, then zoom in. Let me see if I can show it to you. You can see it. You see it right there. You can see the pinholes and the ring of the outline. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to let it dry up some more. 
then I'm gonna go back and wet sand that. Because if I don't, you'll be able to see that through the base coat. You can't see it, like right here, through the camera. But once I zoomed it in, you've seen it good. I sprayed some here, also down here, back here. But all them spots, they're fine. It's just up there that I got a problem with. So once I take care of that, I'll be ready to shoot the base coat. This area here, I'm going to spray some guide coat on. I'm just going to use some flat black spray paint so I can show you what to look for in case you have this problem. That's all I'm going to put on there. I ain't going to put nothing heavy. Just in the area where I got a wet sand. Alright, let's see what we got here. I got some 320 on the block. We're just going to wet sand this. I'll right, show you the low areas. Now you can start seeing the, the low areas and the imperfections, like right here. See, it's low right here. This is a high area. And we keep on bringing it down. Alright, brought it down some more. Now you can start seeing the outline, what I was talking about at first. Alright, I brought it down some more. About got it. Just still low right here. Alright, there you go. The 320. I think I done got it flat enough. But I'm thinking about waiting till the morning and finish it up. Because it done got dark. Also, I'm not trying to rush nothing. Because when you start rushing things, that's when you start having problems. Even though this little mishap here set me back, but it's all good. You got to be able to deal with things like that when you paint. Because anything might happen. So by me starting off fresh, I can clear my mind. Then I'll be in the rhythm to finish it on up. Because when you start trying to finish stuff up and you're already tired, that's when you start making big problems on down the line. So... We're going to come back out here in the morning and start fresh. Then I'll cut you back on then. Alright, this is the following morning here. We're going to reset it. We're going to try to reset it. See what we can get done today. I'm going to grab that same tech cloth. I put it in the bag so it won't get dusted. And then I'm just going to take it off again. And once I take the whole car off, I'm going to take my blow hose and I'm going to blow it off right before I start spraying it. Spraying the base coat. Especially on these flat surfaces here, you want to make sure you take them off because that's where all the dust going to be laying. I'm just wetting the floor down now. We're going to try to go back at it. Hopefully we have some success today for us painting the car.
black base coat finished up with about 10 minutes ago it's still flashing off it ain't fully flashed yet mixing up the clear now I'll take you over there and show you what clear I'm going to use This the clear spy urea cam is a high solid mixes two to one two part clear one part activator
Alright, this is the finished product here. It's been about 30 minutes since I finished up. I had the fan on. I just cut it off to make this little video. Everything turned out good. Except I got a little trash here and there. But I'd be cutting and buffing, so that ain't no big deal. Plus a bug landed in it right there on my last coat. I usually just cover them up with clear. But that was my last coat, so I'm just going to sand the head off. Then I just... You know, cut it, buff it back out, you will never tell a bug guy. But I ain't got no runs or nothing. Just that trash, and you can expect that spraying in this environment here. Huh? Plus, I bought like $1,500 worth of new buffing material with equipment, and I'll be trying it out on him. It's about root pads, so stay tuned. Stop. Right from the bottom to the top, from the top.